guys, Colin here and back at it again with a new video for the week. This time we're not really going to be talking about a particularly interesting gear or gadget, but instead today we're going to take a look at a technology that could potentially change the way we use our smartphones. It's been a tech industry goal to create this ultimate portable computer since the very first PC in 1971. And even more so now that the world is heavily run by the internet. Our social lives, entertainment and games, and often even productivity need to be on the go these days. This has transformed the way we surround ourselves with technology, especially with smartphones going beyond just excellent communicators, but also as capable mobile computers. This is Samsung Desktop Experience, or just simply DeX. Plugging your Samsung device into a monitor transforms the Android system into this desktop-like UI with icons and wallpaper customization, a taskbar, and with apps loading into resizable windows. Samsung even went ahead and branded this as productivity on the go, clearly addressing firsthand what DeX is all about. DeX certainly isn't new and it's actually been here since the Galaxy S8 and even Huawei has had its own version of a desktop mode called Easy Projection since the P20 series. I read that it even works wirelessly over Miracast. But every time I show DeX out, it gets heads turning and people wondering why they haven't heard of this piece of tech. So for three months now, I've been on and off with it and I have a couple of thoughts to share with you guys. Before we talk about what DeX can do, we need a little bit of clarity here. DeX isn't some kind of new operating system that Samsung's been keeping under its version of Android. No, this is still most definitely Android. It just basically translates what's already on your phone into its desktop version. And while that sounds pretty much straightforward, it also poses a few problems as well. The DeX functionality is only available to the Samsung flagship phone starting from the S8 to the newest Note 10 and their flagship tablets, the Tab S4 and the new S6. To access DeX, you need a USB-C to HDMI converter or basically a dongle. There are several options out in the market now, ones with even multiple ports that include an Ethernet port, but I just went with this one from Lazada because it's really cheap. I think it costs somewhere around 380 pesos only. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the description box for that if ever you're interested. Now there are more stuff to take note of about DeX and its hardware limitations, so be sure to check the description box for all of that. Okay, so while I was getting around this platform, I made a mental list of the basics that a computer has to cover, which I think most people would need for them to jump on board with a system like this. One, it has to have keyboard and mouse support for maximum productivity. Two, it needs to be smooth and capable of multi-window multitasking. Three, it needs a desktop class browser that can easily switch between tabs. Four, it should also be excellent for media consumption and maybe just a little bit of gaming. And last but most importantly, people need to be able to get work done on this platform. And that means it needs to be able to smoothly run productivity applications like Microsoft Office and Adobe stuff. When you plug the Galaxy device in, an option pops up in the notification panel if you want to use your phone as a trackpad and keyboard. This, I admit, is pretty handy if you're just going to use DeX to open presentations and documents to show to people on a large screen. It supports multi-touch gestures and if you click into a field that requires text input, the keyboard pops up. But for a full desktop experience, nothing beats a proper keyboard and mouse tandem, which luckily just depends on the dongle you're using. Since mine has one USB-A slot that comes with it, I can plug in an extra USB hub so that I can then in turn plug in a keyboard and mouse, or you could also go with a completely wireless Bluetooth option. On top of all that, DeX has some nice keyboard shortcuts built in, which are very useful. And you can also use that extra USB slot to plug in external storage and access your important files on the go. Anyway, that frees up the phone as an extra screen because lo and behold, going DeX doesn't prevent you from using your phone. You can still use it like you normally would and keep DeX running next to it, which leads us to multi-window multitasking. Since DeX has apps loading into resizable windows, you can have an efficient layout with the apps that you need. And on top of that, maybe even use your phone for music control or something else. You can even prop it up in front of you and there, you 
should have a high quality webcam for your meetings and video calls. You'll be amazed to see that actual multitasking works here with, for example, Word, Chrome, and YouTube all running smoothly at the same time in one screen. Now, Dex can still be very wonky in terms of those resizable windows with a lot of apps not capable of this feature. Instagram can even be resized or moved from the spot where it opens like it's bugged or something. Other apps can also show up with weird button placements and extended screens that makes it all just seem weird when scaling up. Web browsing is probably where I felt most satisfied with Dex. Because Google Chrome has a built-in desktop mode, this works so much better than what you get on mobile with websites loading into their best desktop form. It's only a tiny bit annoying that you have to enable the desktop mode on the browser manually through the settings menu, but hey, it works. In terms of media consumption, YouTube and Netflix come into my mind. When loading YouTube in Dex, it transforms the app into this more efficient layout where you have the video, the description, and the up next and comment section divided into three accessible parts. There's this experimental mode where apps can load in full screen. And while this may be excellent for Netflix since it isn't fully supported on Dex, clearly more work needs to be done such that most other apps conform to this mode. Games that require multi-touch interaction are essentially unplayable on Dex. PUBG, for instance, recognizes WASD keys on the physical keyboard as movement buttons, but you can't aim without having to click and hold on the screen like you normally would on a touchscreen. But to give credit where it is due, Samsung has a respectable list of apps that have been made to work very well with this desktop mode. I even conceptualized and wrote the content for this entire video all on Dex. See, in terms of getting stuff done, just general stuff like emails, word processing and making quick presentations, and maybe even a little photo editing, Samsung Dex has a lot of that covered. Microsoft Word, for instance, has all the familiar features that you get on the actual PC version. It's complete with a spell checker, keyboard shortcuts, and layout editing. And personally, the only thing that's missing here is controlling references and citations. Okay, watch this. I am going to create a graph on Excel and paste it here on Word. And boom, like it's black magic. Some more interesting use case scenarios include making detailed Instagram stories on a larger screen without having to deal with fat finger problems which is perfect for all you creators out there. There's also writing and sending text messages with a setup like this and booking a grab from where you're working without even having to lift your phone. I'm telling you guys, I've only scratched the surface of this tech. And the best part, it doesn't explode into a total mess when you unplug it from the monitor. It just goes back to being a regular smartphone. You can literally walk into a setup like this, plug in, get some work done, and leave. Simple as that. Now I might be buttering Samsung up too much here, so let's talk about the downsides. A lot of Dex's shortcomings from an experience perspective is based on it being just a skin on top of Android. For one, if you hold the shift key while typing, it will refuse to work with the space bar and sirang sira yung keyboard warrior comment na natin type mo dun sa isang nakakainis na post ng kaibigan mo. <laughs> Highlighting text on Microsoft Word is not a click and drag process but rather a right click or a double click and select process. And then there's a whole bunch of other issues but the problem isn't Dex. It's Android. Because the OS is primarily designed around touch inputs, this is what happens. You don't hold the shift key when typing on your smartphone, right? Simply put, the skin just has to evolve to be able to automatically adapt to a proper mouse and keyboard setup. Now as to why I felt this massive itch to really talk about Samsung DeX was because when I discovered it, I ended up daydreaming about how this technology can further evolve in the long run and eventually change the tech space. You're probably out there going, yeah Colin, that's cool and all, but not everyone can afford a Galaxy device. And yeah, I hear you. Android 10 is now right around the corner and guess what? 
Google went ahead and brought in their own take of this desktop mode. Frankly speaking, it's still in its developer stage and it's really unappealing at this point in time. But there it is, baked into the operating system itself with no ties to Samsung's DeX or Huawei's easy projection. Recently, I've seen videos of the OnePlus 7 Pro with its desktop mode since it's been recently updated to Android 10. See, DeX is stable on the Galaxy S8, which was released with the Snapdragon 835 or the Exynos 8895 in 2017. And newer mid-range chipsets such as the Snapdragon 700 series are now performing close to that flagship hardware from that time. This means that mid-range devices today have enough horsepower to support a desktop mode like DeX. Once Android 10 finally trickles down to the mid-range devices, the desktop experience will undoubtedly be available to a significantly larger portion of smartphone users. With that same logic in mind, you can even potentially extend your old flagship device's lifetime for an extra two to three years with this specific functionality. May high-end phone kang basag yung screen tapos masadong mahal yung para repair. Teka muna, wag mo na itapon yan. That phone can still be useful in this desktop mode. Pin all that information in your head and imagine this. You're a college student and you need to use a PC to get more schoolwork done. Instead of your college library lending you a full desktop workstation, you just instead head to this cubicle with a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard and a smartphone dock waiting for you. And you plug in and voila, instantly you have a PC. And not just any computer with a guest account, one that is actually personal with all your files and references kept secured with the phone's biometric security. Given how well phones can render games and media, internet and gaming cafes can even follow suit with all of this. A person can essentially just pay them for the Wi-Fi use and the monitor use. I think Samsung envisioned that same future years ago when they first thought of DeX. I mean, check this out. This is Linux running on my phone, and it isn't some sort of hack or what, and the support is coming straight from Samsung. I've even seen news articles of police officers in the West using DeX as their mobile computing platform in their cars, and small establishments switching to DeX as their point of sale systems. It's only logical because everyone has a phone, and good phones today don't necessarily have to cost so much anymore. Now we all know the Galaxy Fold is officially out now, but imagine a version of that folding phone with DeX built in like the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6. That's definitely a future I'm excited about. Oh, and a little surprise before I end this video, I actually edited and exported this video on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus using Samsung DeX. All right, that's been it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Don't I don't